best, but it was a good jam. <clears throat> less fall. Anyway, we're gonna talk about a little pet stuff now. Pet action. I thought maybe a subject that um, has not been covered much, but asked about a lot, is hat linings. Um, you know, like if you work with hats for a long time, it's kind of like, you know, a big deal is lining, you know. They're, they're disposable. Um, you can pull these things out. But a lot of people don't realize that, you know, when they get a little bunched up, when they come in to get the hat repaired and stuff, you know, it's basically, you know, just kind of pick this up and, you know, fix it. So I'm here to just kind of show you about linings, uh, how easy they are um, to deal with, how to use them, what they're for and stuff, um, how to replace them, I guess. Uh, okay, the lining on the hat, here, let me get this hat right over here, I'm good lining, okay. The lining on the hat is this silk satin stuff, it's generally just satin, that's on the inside of the hat, it's disposable, it's there, so, that, um, you know, the guy's head is, uh, he's, let's say he's wearing hair oil or something, or he's just like perspiring on the top of his head. It's there to keep the hat from getting like sweat, a circle of sweat on the top, basically. And the idea is that you sweat into this cheap lining, it's 10 bucks, and then after a certain amount of years, it could be five years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever, you, you just take it out, okay, and you change it, throw it away. Get a new one. Uh, I don't know, maybe you could wash it. I've never heard of anybody doing it, but you could probably wash it as long as there's no heat involved and it doesn't shrink. Um, this is like some man-made satin kind of stuff or something, so it's no big deal. You could hand wash it, I guess, too. Um, all right, here's the deal. The lining is generally put in, you can see there's a little like glue on it, if you look carefully, little dabs of hot glue. What they generally do, there, there is, Somebody in the factory has like a hot glue gun, he goes like this with the gun, just kind of touches it really quickly. He doesn't want to get like a big glob of glue on it where it feels like a, like a plastic balls inside your hat. Just kind of like dabs it, wipes it. That way, if, also it doesn't go through the felt or anything. So, it's in there, kind of glued in, but like barely. All right. A lot of times these linings get bunched up, and what you got to do is you got to steam them because they're kind of like, you know, it just won't make a nice cone shape like this. Steam it. Just put it in front of the kettle, you know, maybe get a ball of tissue or something so you don't burn your hands and use the tissue to rub, rub it kind of. Or just wave it. All right. Take your freshly steamed lining. You put it in. First thing I do is I generally punch out all the creases, make it round. Pick up the sweat down like this. Center it with the, you know, the writing the right way, whichever way you want. I think that's actually backwards. All right, get it in there. Flip the band back. That's usually it. Um, now, to keep this thing from moving around, you can also get some craft glue, Elmer's glue, Duco cement, anything, but don't use a lot of it. Um, a hot glue, glue gun is perfect. A tiny bit, just kind of like dab it just to keep it from moving around. Um, I guess that's about it. You know, it's another hat with a lining on it. It's an old hat of mine. Let's see, let's try to remove this lining. Oh, got some duct tape in there. Tighten the hat. Ancient duct tape. Let's take that out of the duct tape. All right, here's the lining. Sometimes it feels like you're ripping it out. In this case, it was my old duct tape that was ripping, but if you feel some sort of ripping action, generally it's just the hot glue. You'll just get in there close and pull it like, you know, don't just yank it, you know. Get in there carefully and just like, all right. Steam it out, make nice shape. New lining goes in there, open the crown first. Bam, it's pretty easy. Lines are cheap, they're 10 bucks, and they last a very long time. You don't need to use it. A lot of times I don't use them when I'm working, because I want my hats to be a little cooler, um, so I take it out. But um, I guess if you, you know, you don't care about that, and um, I mean, the idea is, for me taking the lining out, is I like my hats to be a little bit cooler, because I'm working nine to five, kind of hustling in my hats, and they get a little hot with the satin lining. I feel like this is, 
for felt, this is leather. All this stuff is like natural material and, and the satin is just like this polyester -y kind of man-made stuff. It doesn't breathe that well and that's the idea, you know. It's not that absorbent and it, and it keeps the sweat from going through it. Now if you have a bald head or a bald spot or just very thin hair, keep the lining in because you're gonna get a spot there, you know, a wet spot. Um, and same thing with the leather sweatband. If you are a shaved head person, super short hair like uh, crew cut, sweat will go through a ribbon sweatband really quick. Use a leather sweatband. You could even use that product I talked about, this called Cap Banu. Um, at JJ Hatson's we call them sweat wicks. You put that all the way around, it keeps sweat from going through the hat and stuff. I'm, I'm not gonna say perspiration and be like politically correct, uh, it's too rain and spain for me. I'd rather just say sweat because it's one syllable and easier to say. So I'm gonna say sweat from now on and no more perspiration, okay? This is a real down home channel and stuff and we, we say sweat. All right, so that's the lining. We've, we've spoken about wind cords before. Um, wind cord is the little elastic cord that goes around the hat. That one basically is for your lapel. There's a, uh, a lapel on your jacket and your coat, your, your overcoat, your blazer, has a little buttonhole there. Now that buttonhole is for wind cords. So the idea is when you're walking home, you take this wind cord off, make a ring out of it, take the ring off, put the button through that buttonhole. So if it blows away from you, it's a bungee kind of thing. It hangs from the cord, you know? doesn't get away from you. Well, look at that, it works. They're not very strong. I definitely recommend reinforcing the stitch, uh, the stitch in the wind cord that goes to the hat. Just like reinforce it with some good strong stitches if you really want to use your wind cord in a functional way. And what else have we got? We spoke about sweatbands. Leather sweatbands are great because you can wipe them down with a hanky and keep them dry. Ribbon sweatbands are cool because they're much lighter weight and they're crushable. You can usually crush your hat with a ribbon band, but it doesn't block any perspiration really at all. Um, cloth bands are somewhere in the middle. They don't really block that much perspiration, but they block it for a little while, you know, but nowhere close to a leather band. A cloth band is, eh, it's for crushing. It's just like a ribbon band for crushing, keeping lightweight soft. Um, generally in a Panama hat, something very lightweight, They'll use either one. They'll use ribbon to keep the weight down, keep it cool, or they'll use leather to keep you from sweating through it in the first, you know, week. So that's up to you. There are pros and cons to both. A leather band definitely is going to keep your hat clean much longer because it blocks perspiration. Basically, your hat dies when it becomes all sweaty and dirty, right? So <coughs> leather's going to make it last way longer. It's also going to feel clean because uh, you sweat up your hat and you. I'm saying sweat a lot now, it's great. Now you, you get a hanky, you dry it, it's nice and cool. Your ribbon sweatband, your cloth band, sweat it up, you go and you eat at a cafe, you cool off, you put it back on, the hat is all wet. It's like still wet and cold from the AC, it's just, yeah. So it's not that sanitary, but it's way lighter and it's crushable. Leather band versus not leather bands, pros and cons. For me, I don't really care. I just buy a hat that I like. Um, I don't obsess on that stuff, but if hats are not lasting you a long time because you're sweating through them a lot, maybe you have a s shaved head and you're buying Panamas. Um, I can see how Panamas could maybe last the season or something if you're sweating through them. Get the pad, like I told you, Cap Banu. We call them sweat wicks at JJ's. They're five bucks. I use them in like all my work hats, every one. Uh, not the hats that I wear at home <coughs> or like going out or something. You only wear work hats because I perspire or sweat in them. But um, get the pad or get a leather sweatband because if you have a shaved head and you're buying hats with ribbons and Panamas and stuff, it can be expensive, so yeah. You have to, uh, that's a very important thing to think about with sweatbands. Go with the leather sweatband if you foresee that sweat problem happening. Sweat, 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 sweat. Um, and if you do sweat 
it's too late. You really can't clean the hat. So prevention is the whole thing. I'm going to repeat it. If you sweat into a hat, you can't clean it. Um, there are some new acids. This is, I forgot the name of this acid that that cleans it. That you can send it to somebody. Like you got to find some guy across the country who does it. And uh, I'm not doing it. Um, I don't like putting my hats in new experimental acid cleaners until I find out that they're safe. Like two decades later, you know, nobody's got cancer from it. So for me, yeah, if my hat gets sweaty, that's the end. So what I do is I prevent it. I use the sweat wick or get a leather sweat band. Or if I do manage to sweat through it, I change the bands before it gets out here, it stays in the outer band. That's the purpose of the outer band. It makes contact with your head. So if you get salt, sweat stains through the hat, it gets caught in this ribbon band and wicks it all the way around. It holds on to it, keeps it away from the felt, which is uncleanable. So when you see the salt on here, it's telling you, hey Kev, you got like a wearing or two or whatever, a week or so before it's gonna start messing up the felt and you're gonna have a ring of sweat around it forever. So put a pad in there, change your outer band, change your inner band, uh, put a leather sweatband in there, a new band, whatever, do something because that hat's gonna be sweaty very soon. Um, what else? We talked about the outer band, the inner band, just the, the cord, the lining. See, more of that anatomy of a hat stuff, I guess. The pinch is basically to lower a hat. Without that, it's just too high. So that's what, I'm not the pinch, the crease. See, it's too high, it's like a top hat. So this crease lowers it to a decent height. You basically set the height. If you're a sh shorter person, we'll set it lower. So if you go to JJ's, we'll actually tailor that like a pant cuff to the right height for, for your face and, you know. Like if you're a little short guy, you don't want a big tall crown. It's gonna make it look like you're wearing the wrong hat or, you know, make you look short. You got some tall guy's hat on. You want the crown to be appropriate for your height. Uh, I'm not a tall guy, so I know exactly what this this is about, all this stuff. Uh, I gotta lower my crowns a lot of times, but I, I actually like high crowns. It's like a very bold, showy look, and, you know, authentic, old timey look. Um, but yeah, crown height is set by this crease. Okay. Now, the same way, these pinches narrow it. This lowers it, these narrow it. So without those, they look too boxy. It's got that Hamburg look, like that hat uh, Buscemi always used to wear on the Empire, what was it, Boardwalk Empire? It was like a white hat with some brown, and it was always up and round. So that round look is like very formal. It looks like a, like a Hamburg or a top hat. Uh, as soon as you pinch it, it's like, yeah, you know, it's a pinched hat. It's soft, it's like a working, yeah, working man's hat, kind of. It looks like a fedora now, it's something different. And um, I think it narrows it, makes it look more slim, fashionable, tailored. That's the word, tailored. So I guess uh, all this stuff tailors the hat. I don't think there's much more to talk about. The brim, we've talked about that. With different brim, you've got a raw edge, which is just cut. Raw edges are not the strongest edge, but they're very nice looking. Everybody likes it. You've got a welted edge when it's folded over and hemmed. It's kind of like the light felts have that. It's like they take it and they fold it over and double it on the end and then stitch it down like a hem. That hemmed edge is called an underwelt or an overwelt, depending where it is, a welted edge. The third type is a bound, bound like binding, uh, a bound edge, which is like my green hat that has the black ribbon here. So when they put ribbon on the edge of a brim, that's called a bound edge. That's also, like the welted edge, it's for, it's for strength. It's better than a raw edge as far as keeping it straight, but it's mostly for cosmetics, I think. Um, it's just a polished kind of a, an option, you know? And a lot of people like it. Um, a lot of people don't like it. I like it. Um, I generally like a bound edge. Um, anything on the edges, to me, it's good. It just keeps your, your hat straight, you know, stable. Keeps it from getting floppy. The raw edges are more prone to getting softer, especially if it's a soft hat. So if you're gonna do that, go with thick felt or very good, good felt. That's what I say. Um, there are a couple of other types of edges. There's a raw, raw edge with a whip stitch uh, when the edge has a little stitching at the very, very, very tip. So 
you don't see the side of the felt. It's kind of like the side becomes skinnier. Um, it makes it look very sharp. Um, or have the Seville has that, the Valencia, the very famous hat, Opa Como has that. And uh, that's about it for brim edges. I think we've covered a lot of the, uh, the different parts, the hat linings, the, the wind cords, and all that stuff. And we said sweat over a hundred times in this video. And uh, I got to sort of experiment a little bit with my guitar too. So I'm going out now, um, actually going shopping and going to the uh, guitar shop. So that's my day off, everybody. Now I gotta play the song. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. 